characters. So is he referring to uh, a Krishna with, uh, is he referring to um, uh, Duryodhana and uh, the Kauravas? By the word Akrishna, Vidaha, etc., Mandan, Tan, yeah. and so forth. Yes. No, it's not with, uh, referring to the Kauravas. It's because now Krishna is talking about one's duty, and uh, Krishna has just finished talking about Tattvam, the Atma Tattvam, and so forth. So, Krishna Vidaha is to be taken uh, as it is, which is that one who does not know what it is all about. And uh, that, that's all it is. We should not read any more into that. And it can refer to anybody. It does refer to, uh, can refer to Duryodhana and so forth, Kauravas. But no. Uh, I'm curious, why, what made you ask that question? No, I'm, I'm asking because, uh, hey, Arjuna, he has, he's so full of doubts, right? So he's asking Krishna and uh, I can, meaning, if you look at it, Arjuna also doesn't know Atma and Anatma, right? That's why he's asking those questions. And right. uh, so when Krishna makes this statement, uh, uh, I, I'm just putting myself in Arjuna's place and I'm thinking, hey, you know, I don't know and I'm asking you. And, uh, Correct. 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 Therefore, are you I, talking and about I'm... me or you're talking about my enemy? <laughs> Correct. And once we do that, the minute we put ourselves in the shoes of Arjuna, then then it refers to Arjuna, it refers, and I'm not Duryodhana, so it refers to everybody else also. So, and I can be Duryodhana, I can be Arjuna also, right? Anything is possible. So, all of us, yeah. Uh, Jai Kumar Ji? Yeah, one minute. Mahesh, uh, the Mahesh, go ahead. Yeah, we can't yeah, see. Yeah, I am not on video, Jay Kumar Ji. Yeah, go ahead. Bandwidth problem. So, yeah. in this uh, sloka 329, he said, one who knows uh, should not disturb those who, not, who do not know. Mm. Means, then how do they learn if you do not disturb them and educate? <laughs> how do I learn? <laughs> Yeah, that's why we have to advertise for a course and then you teach only those who registered for the course. Don't pull people from the street and say, hey, I'm teaching a course, come online, Zoom, this, that, you know, and then come, it's a free course, you all should learn Vedanta, what is this, you are roaming around. No, <laughs> that, is, that is called disturbing. If I were to do that, that is what disturbing. Registering for the course means, okay, you all know what you're getting into. You are no. When I sign up for this course, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know whose face I'm going to look at every day. All this, you are taking the risk, and they all, you know, the fine print is already there. And so, those who are who read the fine print and still come, then you can talk to them. That's how you know. And all of us have been there, right? And uh, no, Swamiji knocked on our door. You know, even look at this. Even our Puja Swamiji. He used to go to places and uh, family in family interactions, he will not tell anything. Only in a public talk, in a talk, he will talk like this. In a home, he will not give a lecture on Vedanta. No. The person is there to bless and uh, talk and understand what's going on and what kind of help is needed. That's all. No, they will not. They will be like, behave like normal, good human beings. Such, that's how it is. <laughs> The reason I asked was because in the last uh, part of the sentence when we translated, we said, um, who do not know the self and who are not discrimin discerning between Atma and Anatma means who do not understand the difference between Atma and Anatma. Yeah. So, yeah. So people who may be willing to learn, but still they don't understand, like Correct. Arjuna. Correct, correct. So, willing to learn and recognized, uh, but see, but, uh, but now we all have, some, Viveka is there. Atma and Anatma, there is something called Atma, there is, I am in the process of learning. So, that is how you should look at it. So, you should look at that word as somebody who is totally unaware, totally unaware that there is such a thing and there is no interest also. That also you can add. There is no interest. You teach, because this is a subject matter which is to be understood 
and uh, you cannot force anybody to do that and uh, and also somebody who's not prepared that that preparedness has to be kept in mind yeah so it should not we should not take it that literally that even though i am like that uh, how am i going to know that uh, that is uh, we don't need to extend it to that context yeah yeah so yeah the so several people who raised their hand one second vaidyanathan i take ji namaste thank you yes uh, uh, um, how far we can take it so yeah, can you repeat the guna. question uh, vaidya oh. yes i'm starting so we talked about guna how far we can take uh, guna uh, for example would ahankara also be considered in the category of guna as a modification of prakriti or yeah so yeah essentially every karyam every effect is guna every effect every product is guna therefore mind is also guna if the mind itself is guna ahankara is guna because ahankara is after all a thought ahankara is after all a thought uh, in the mind correct okay okay uh, so no thought... okay. yeah yeah so therefore ahankara also is guna only. ಕೃಷ್ಣಾ that's applicable here also right though we say ignore them maybe we um, get them involved in action so that they continue uh, at least not being lazy and not uh, taking any interest in yeah definitely so we are not krishna is not saying ignore them okay. ignore them we never said okay is is talking about arjuna hey everybody is watching you people are not ignoring you and therefore you you be do what is to be done and uh, and uh, wise people become a center of attraction they are, in the sense they are people look up to them and so there is no question of ignoring and uh, the person has to become even more responsible than before even more responsible so a lot of people uh, look up to them so no we are not ignoring anybody we just uh, you tell them to do what is to be done and uh, clarity is may not be there about what is to be done etc in situations so help them understand situations and they may come to you for help and if so of course you must help them and uh, so that's the way it is yeah yeah prasad gurujala uh, um actually my question a little bit have been answered by uh, when uh, vaidya ji asked uh, yeah. so first question i have two questions the first one is the ahankara uh, vimudhatma and uh, guna samudaha they are almost close to each other right of course you i think this is what i said when vaidya ji asked uh, so that was in my mind actually so there's no uh, not much different uh, in terms of because it is the same vikshepa what uh, we are um uh, or uh, uh, the ignorance which has been there in the mind yeah exactly so ahankara vimudatma prakriti guna samudaha yeah so yeah same meaning refers to the same uh, refers to the same thing yeah correct um the second question i have is that so the Uh, this is about ahankara uh, vimudatma so with respect to that uh, so the mind has got many constituents uh, in fact in buddhism they talk about 120 minds and so on now within the uh, minds which we talk about the it seems to me that the uh, ahankara part of it has got very significance so i am taken to the uh view that is that the subtlest part of the mind because it seems that there is a relation between the the awareness 
with the ego. Uh, so there is sort of some relationship between them because this is to be seems to be more important aspect. It's a subtlest aspect because this is what is related to say uh, when I talk about karma, it is related to the body, right? Because the karmic effect is on the body. Uh, similarly, uh, it has got. Uh, so th what I'm trying to understand is that its relation, ego relation, with the awareness. Yeah, am I clear? Uh, because, it, uh, in other words, two things. One is uh, this: is it the subtlest part of the mind? And there seems to be some uh, important relation between the ego aspect and the awareness, actually, which which gets to the body and all other senses. Yeah, so is ego, ego I'm going to assume you, where by the word ego, you mean ahankaraha. And uh, ahankaraha here is referring to the I thought. So the, the, the thought that I, I, I am, okay? That, that thought is called ahankaraha. And so is it the subtlest part of the mind? Well, mind itself is subtle. Okay, mind is subtle, sukshma. And so, ahankara is a thought. So, that's born in the mind. And uh, every thought is subtle because, uh, because you can't, you, it's, not, it's, not, it's not physically, you know, tangible. And so, it's all subtle. Every thought is subtle. And ahankara, rather than say it is subtle, we will say it is the, it is the thought that is there always. Every time thought comes and go, correct? Now there is the thought of Bhagavad Gita class. Now I see many people. There is Grish Menon, Bhavani, Ramesh, etc. So many people are there. So many thoughts are there. And uh, then after the Zoom class is over, there will be so many other thoughts going on. House thought is there. Parents thought, children thought, everything is there. Breakfast thought will come shortly for me. And so these thoughts are constantly going on. So but what about the Hankara? It doesn't go away. Ahankara needs to remain. As long as I have an identity, Ahankara. Ahankara gives me the identity. Right? Until I sleep, I go to sleep. And when I go to sleep, that Ahankara also goes into the Karana Sharira. It's not there. And so, yeah, you can, rather than say it is subtle, because everything is subtle in the mind, I will say it is the thought that is the most pervasive. It is a thought that exists all the time. Almost all the time, at least. So that is ahankara. And uh, the relationship between ahankara and awareness, we know what that is. Ahankara is mithya, awareness is satyam. The same relationship between wave and water, that is the relationship between ahankara and awareness, chit. Okay? By that, we are not differentiating. When I say uh, uh, ego, obviously we have other parts. I don't say part. It is the manifestation of the same mind. We have uh, intellect. We talk about um, chitta. We talk about uh, ahankara, right? So that's where my distinction when I say ahankara. So thought is a general thing, right? But in this case, the when I mentioned ahankara, it is in 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 uh, distinction with uh, my intellect or with uh, my chitta. So when it comes to that's where I am trying to distinguish in the sense that yes. Mind is subtle, subtle, but again, I have uh, uh, ahankara, I have chitta, I have uh, uh, intellect also, buddhi. Now, that's why I'm asking like, okay, among all this, this is the subtlest part. That's what I'm, I want, to, uh, I mean to say. Yeah, that is okay. That is okay. You can say that. And even buddhi and manas, really speaking, we are dividing it. There's really no two entities called buddhi and manas, right? Yeah. And certain faculties of the mind, we attribute, we say it is buddhi, the intellecting faculty, the deciding faculty, the deliberating faculty. So right now we are using our buddhi quite a bit because we are trying to understand what is Prasad saying, what is Jaykumar Ji saying. We are trying to analyze all that, right? All these words that are being used. So buddhi is being used. Manas, we use generally for emotions, at the seat of emotions and so forth, right? So that's manas. So there we are only... We are cognitively making a difference. But in the brain, you know, how it works, we don't know. And all thoughts are thoughts. And uh, But yeah, you can say what you said is all right. We can say Ankara and... Uh,
but understand ahankara is mithya and uh, and uh, satyam is atma okay that i think we must be clear that is the most important part in the discussion everything whether ahankara is subtle not subtle let less subtle more subtle is not that important okay Th- that's what i want to make a point yeah, i had a question yeah uh, yeah go ahead him yeah uh, so this is uh, just a clarification from what you said uh, when you say that ahankara is pervasive does that mean that uh, it is constantly there or uh, do you mean to say that it is the thought which occurs most often because when you say it is constantly there it could it would mean that you can, you will have ahankara along with any other thought that comes in but how would that be possible because at a time you can have only one thought right yeah so at a time you have one thought <clears throat> but uh, how do you know at a time you don't uh, you are looking i am looking at the room so now what i have uh, the window thought i have wall thought i have i see so many things at the same time but so at I an s- instant uh, i when i say thought i mean all that is being perceived and causing that reaction in in the mind so that entire thing is what i would call a thought right so it's not like a window thought or a so in that sense uh, i mean thought. yeah so what we say is the ahankara that that the identity i am the one who is watching this the scenery mm-hmm. that you you said i have a thought who mm-hmm. has a thought i have a thought that i uh-huh. is ahankara that i is ankara but that i doesn't occur at the same time as the perception yes it does it does it is it see, it see if it did not occur at the same time then you the i cannot say i saw it yeah. so i saw it means the scene also should be there and i also should be there at the same time in order to say i saw it right so so the i thought is constant it's always in there in other words is is it like uh, i guess uh, ramana maharshi uh, says that it's the basis of all other thoughts right unless you have an identity the other thoughts don't make yeah. sense they are all in relation to your identity so that yeah that's that that uh, that ahankara buddhi is there constantly there and which is what which is what gives you the identity which is what makes you a karta karta otherwise kartritam will not be there see mm-hmm. if the if the sight is there but ahankara is not there then you can never say i i saw you can never even say it because there is i so you talking about an object that you saw and then there is i and so that iness has to come from ahankara it has to be there i don't think we should limit ourselves by saying i thought is separate from this and then they can never occur simultaneously i think that's uh, that's somewhat limiting that's somewhat mm-hmm. limiting and we should allow the i thought is there constantly because as long as <laughs> okay. the in the wake in the waking state jagrat avastha i thought is constant so i think the uh, this, this uh, idea for me is coming because when i think about the i thought it is the words i did this so i am limiting myself to that conceptualized in the form of words or images in my head so that conceptualization is limiting the i the definition of i thought for me whereas what i think you mean by the i thought is this constant awareness that i am an entity apart from the correct yeah. constant awareness that i am an entity yeah, yeah. so that is which the is difference se- i guess which is separate from everything else and i have to engage with everything else yeah. right, right 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 okay, okay. is it uh, you can also put that i is the filter through which all the thoughts come through yes see The, the, yeah i see again you introduce the word filter and so then we have to define what a filter is and uh, we don't need to say filter thoughts are coming that's all and now yeah they, 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 we we talk sometimes about filters like the you know like you put the cooling glasses you see everything and everything looks green or everything looks blue dark whatever but um, yeah there is in that context you can say filter but i thought need not be filtering thought need not be a filter i thought need not be a filter that's what i'm saying it's just an i thought it's an observing now you have to decide what you observed is it useful to you is it nice is not nice is boring it's raining is you have to make so many things out of what you saw what you hear so that process is constantly going on so there may be filtering going on there also so i i thought is i thought we just have to leave it at that 
Is yeah. that the nova? Uh, see, I thought is the nova, right? Which becomes like karta or bhokta. Correct. Fine. The I thought is the nova. Is the knower? Is the doer? Is the thinker? Is the is the, is the accomplisher? Is the guy who is this? I am this. I am that. We say it's a, referring to the ankara only. That's why so, there's so, confusion. Yeah. So I think the best way to identify it is to look at the difference between deep sleep and waking state. Like the essence of the difference between deep sleep and waking state is that I thought, right? Is it? Is it? Can we correct. say it like correct. that? correct correct there is no i thought in in deep sleep so yeah. to understand i thought you have to go to the deep sleep state yeah yeah you have to appreciate the deep sleep state yeah to shukti good that's the way it is yeah but nor is still present but in a, a dormant form right correct correct deep. nor is there but dormant karana sharira that's why shastra introduces karana sharira okay. Otherwise, you can't say I slept well. You can't say that. Exactly. To say I slept well, the I must have been there somehow, right? Right. Right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, Jai Kumar Ji. Ani Indurkar, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. I'm un unmuted. Yes. Uh, so we. Uh, this looks what we are discussing as the wise person attributes, and Sthita Pradnyam from second chapter there. I mean, to me, they are looking like the continuum, same thing almost. Am I on the? Uh, is that is that a right interpretation? Yes, yes, it is. It is. Yeah. So okay. Krishna is not talking about two types of wise people. No. Yes. Like yeah. Yes. Got it. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Good. Jayakumar. Yeah. I just want to relate something that uh, a joke that Pooja Swamiji used to say about in this context. But you know, we talked about Siddha Pragna in second chapter, about vice person in the third chapter, and so on. So Swamiji, Sadhu and Rishikesh, uh, who used to read Gita every day. Your your voice every is day. breaking. Vaidya, your voice is breaking. Your voice is breaking. Oh. we are not able to i am not able to hear everything clearly yeah so maybe if you use a microphone yeah, next so time you sadhu... know some yeah, yeah so go ahead sadhu used to chant bhagavad gita every day can you hear me mm. yeah sort of go ahead yeah okay so so uh, one of the devotees asked him So Maharaj ji why do you do this every day why do you read bhagavad gita every day So the sadhu you know this is a joke of course the so sadhu said main apni tarif ko roz padhta hu Ah apni tarif Yeah So I'm 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 reading about myself right Yeah Correct Correct yeah So 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 Jay Kumar ji sorry but uh, again putting all the other things together isn't ahamkara within sorry witnessed by the atma isn't that how we are isn't that what we are trying to drive atma is uh, the one that witnesses everything without doing anything so ahamkara is something which is active which is thinking takes ownership you know in whichever phase it's 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 there most of a waking states or what not but atma is the one that is witnessing it all and it is not participating in 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 the in the quote unquote fruiting fruitive actions yeah so the only thing we have to be careful if i say yes to your question what will happen is we have to define the word witnessing when you say atma is witnessing everything what do you mean by that what do you mean by that see if i say i was a witness to that crime if i say then what what do you understand you will think oh jay kumar ji was there right in that crime scene when that when that accident happened etc i was there i saw it with my own eyes that is how that is the word, that's how we understand witness the word witness now when we say atma witnesses everything how are you going to understand that are we saying atma has some eyes it is looking at stuff what is it do we mean by the word yeah. witness 
So it, in, in many books, the word witness will be written. Atma is a witness of everything. Okay. That is popularly said. But it, that word witness is not like the way I witness this okay. uh, my children playing. And it's not that yes. kind of witnessing. As long as we understand that, we are okay to use the word witness. It means what? It is always there. It is a Sakshi. The word Sakshi is used. Sakshi. Correct. Sakshi. And uh, it is Sakshi means it's always present. In its present, everything happens. In its presence, everything happens. Okay. Right. And because it's like, it's, when you give an example, in the mother's presence, the children are playing, suppose I say. Then the mother is witness of everything because she is watching everything. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, witness and uninvolved. Right. So, in its presence, everything happens. That is the right way to understand the word witness. Otherwise, witnessing will become an action. Remember that. <laughs> Correct. Witnessing is an action. Correct. No, we can't involved. attribute action involved. to Atma. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Was that helpful? Oh, very. very. Thank you. There, there is yeah. this, there is this, uh, uh, I have a shloka here. Uh, Dva oh. Suparna uh, Sakaya, Sayuja Sakaya, which I yeah. think is, is one which goes into it. I cannot say the whole thing. I have just yeah. written it down. Yeah. But it, it is, it is... Uh, Something to come back to all the time. Correct, correct. We will come back to Dwas open now, one of these days. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Good. So we will stop with that. Let's see if there are any questions in the chat message. Okay. So Ami is asking. Does that mean ahankara is duality? Rather, it leads to duality. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, what, first we have to understand what duality means. Duality means what? Duality means there are many things and each thing is independent of the other. That is our definition of duality. Just many things is not enough. Many things are there, no doubt. And so I am there and the food is there on the plate and I consume the food. So many things are there. Okay, Things are many, fortunately. But everything is independent of each other. If you say that is duality. If you say everything is dependent on one Satyam, that is Atma, that means that is Advaita. Correct, Ami? Did, did, did I clarify? I hope she is there here. I can't see her. Here. No, no, she, no, she, she, she no. had to leave, I think. She sent a message. Okay. She is leaving. Okay. So, that's the idea. So, so therefore, uh, duality, we have to understand duality as independent things. Many independent things, that is duality. And uh, otherwise, there is there is seeming duality, seeming duality. And so, if there are so many waves, and the waves don't know that they are all water. And every wave thinks I am independent, I am separate, etc. So that's how it works. Yeah. Okay. So Prasad is saying ahankara need not be present always. For example, when you are playing and enjoying it. And uh, yeah, yeah, that may be true. But later on, if I ask you, Prasad, what were you doing uh, last <laughs> half an hour? You will, you will say, I, am, I was playing and enjoying it. <laughs> That's what you will say. So then Ankara was there. Enough Ankara was there to, to witness all these things. Okay. So good, good question. So, one question. Hmm. If you come up in the previous class, you had asked me, you know, to ask in the subject. I'd ask you separately. So this is the meaning of anavaptam and avaptam. Yeah. Nanavaptam avaptavyam vartaye vacha karmani. That is the line, right? Yeah. Yeah. So which loka it comes? Can you point to that loka? 
ಇಂಟರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ <laughs> not that kind of thing that means i am contented i i know i am not interested in that it is not going to make me anything better i don't need to go to hawaii to be happy okay that's different from saying everything is me therefore there is no such thing as gaining something i must gain something only if there is something other than me then only i will have a desire to gain it but everything is krishna therefore how can krishna say i want to gain something <laughs> that is the way to look at it yeah thank you yeah yeah okay so we will have uh, question about yeah. question about friday event no? ah friday. okay friday yeah friday i thought being a new year's day uh, i thought we can spend some time doing japa and understanding this dakshina murti is a very important uh, important uh, devata for us and especially for all of us who are studying vedanta so i thought i will introduce that what is dakshina murti and what is uh, and then do a japa a mola mantra japam which i'll uh, i'll send it to you and so those of you who can join um, same time 6:30 i hope uh, i think some of you will have conflicts but uh, i hope at least a few of you can i see a show of hands some of you who might join okay yeah so yeah i can join i cannot okay. show my hands but i can show it okay <laughs> or you can show your hands but we cannot see your hands so so no, anyway. there, there is a virtual hand that you can put up <laughs> yeah <laughs> right, right so yeah that is the plan <laughs> vijay yeah? yeah so we'll send you that mantra on by by mail okay Maybe. so we'll spend half uh, we'll spend an hour or so that day um, that is the plan yeah what is the question uh, jay kumar ji what is the difference between tatva vit and rama vat see rama vat ramasya eva tatva vit is the one who possesses ah uh, so so the the vat rama vat means like rama ramasya eva ah uh, rama vat rama ha eva okay rama ha eva means like rama that is the meaning of rama vat the vat suff- suffix means like ghata vat like a pot and uh, and then uh, i've never tasted rasagulla you know it is rasagulla it is like gulab jamun okay gulab jamun vat means rasagulla is like gulab jamun that is a that is a vat suffix but here it is vit not vat correct tatva vit tatva vit uh ah, krishna vit so vit here is not that vit means one who knows krishnam veti iti krishna vit tatvam veti iti tatva vit veti means knows janati knows okay. knows so one who knows tatvam is tatva vit one who knows krishnam is krishna vit okay rukmini ji was that helpful pardon 
did did i make myself clear yeah yeah i had the doubt with and what difference you know different very different meanings yeah. one is vatu pratyaya another is uh, another is uh, is, uh, is is not a, not a pratyaya veti so it's called uh, gunavat we say it's it's, it's not a pratyaya okay. it's uh, it's called it's a samasa actually samasa so it's called what samasa it is called um ராஜா <laughs> so that word varada varam dadati iti varada the one who gives varam gives what you are asking for gives what is best for you that person is called varada and so that's a different type of samasa and i'll i'll tell you what this samasa is so like that tattva vit tattvam veti iti one who knows the tattvam is uh, yes. anyway samasa is a bit complicated concept for everybody but uh, that's how it works rukmini ji yeah good okay hey let's uh, mute everybody om namo bhagavate vasudevaya dhanvantaraye amrita kala sahastaya sarva maya vinashanaya trilokyanathaya shri mahavishnave namaha ஓம் நமோ பகவதே வாசுதேவாய தன்வந்தரையே அமிர்த கலசஹஸ்தாய சர்வாமய விநாசனாய திரைலோக்கியநாதாய ஸ்ரீ மகாவிஷ்ணவே நம ஓம் நமோ பகவதே வாசுதேவாய தன்வந்தரையே அமிர்த கலசஹஸ்தாய சர்வாமய விநாசனாய ஸ்ரீ மகாவிஷ்ணவே நம